Hi, welcome back. We're going to look at um, the issue of searching Australian common surnames. The reason for doing this is that it is a wonderful data bank of all people who are enrolled um, on the electoral roll, but it is also very useful for you when you are trying to decide on whether your, your name is trademarkable and inherently adapted to distinguish. If since 1993, three letters and three numerals on their own are not going to be accepted as inherently adapted to distinguish. So what you would have to do is actually be able to show that it's not a common surname or the like. With this, the advantage is that the less the number of people on the register of elector of voters, the more likely your name is to be unique for the purposes of being inherently adapted to distinguish. If you get a number less than 500, there is an, a really strong relationship to the name being unique. So let's do a quick search. Here we go. Search for a trademark is where we have to go. And we click on that page and then we scroll down the page until we get to the register. Here we are. Search for Australian surnames. Now let's do a common one. Smith. It's busy thinking about it. So Smith should actually come up with at least, uh, well it does, 114,997. You won't get Smith as a surname registered as a trademark. Now Smith's crisps have got a name registered, but then it goes back with a long history these things have changed with time. Let's look at other names. Chan. 9,000. Now I can do um, Tannehill. This would be a good trademark name, but would not be appropriate if you're going to be a tanner and using it for leather goods it would be considered descriptive but Tanner Hill 56 very trademarkable another one um, Sugden Two hundred and eighty-six of us on the rolls in Australia. It would be registrable as a trademark in Australia, but it would not be in England, as there are at least at least um, three to seven thousand in the London phone book alone. It's a very common English name, but not in Australia. Now. Let's look at, and this is where you can actually cyber. None for cyber. Three thousand. But this is a very good tool to use if you're going to use a word mark. Even if it's an invented word, let's see what happens with a Kodak. Oh, there are four Kodaks. Then that's definitely trademarkable, but it is also an invented word used by the Kodak company, which is now in receivership. Let's look at it.
no one with the name Chanel. So what I'm actually doing here is just asking or showing you that you can search this for the purposes of working out whether your trademark name that you propose is going to be registrable as a trademark. So remember to use this with any word mark that you're going to use because you may be surprised at what surnames do appear that are actually quite common even though you think it might be an invented word. So this is really publicly available site that you can search to add value to your trademark research. Okay, that's where we'll end this demonstration. Thanks. Bye.